Hello, you Putneys and Astrons, or Astrons and Putneys, or whoever you call yourself. It's Parashas Vayigash. There's a pattern that is has been going on in last week's Parsha, actually all the way, all the way back to Parshas Vayeshev. There's something going on between Yosef and Yehuda. So, attached to your email, I have this coloring page. That's Yosef sitting there looking like Paro because he's in the place of Paro. And back behind him is Yehuda. Yehuda is the one in the family who will be the kingly tribe. This will be announced uh, when Yaakov is dying, which is further ahead. So, what's happening here between Yosef and Yehuda? Yosef is the son of Rachel. Yehuda is the line of Malchus, kingship. And the plan here is that the children of Rachel prepare Yehuda and David and further for kingship. They are the teachers assigned by Hashem. Now, how does this work with Yehuda and Yosef? Yosef puts Yehuda under maximum pressure. Yosef and tell, has told the brothers previously, if you don't come back with Binyamin, then you all uh, you all be my slaves, and you won't you won't see my face again. And so the the brothers eventually get told by Yaakov, you have to go back. You get some food, and they say we can't go back without Binyamin. He says, well, I can't send Binyamin. Because I've lost Rachel, and I've lost Yosef, or so he thinks. And now I'm going to lose Binyamin and cry about it. And I'll just go down to death. No. But finally, he's convinced they have to have food. So the ten brothers take Binyamin down with them to buy uh, grain. And Yosef sets up a trap that his special cup is put into the sack of Binyamin and it looks like Binyamin stole it and they're going to have uh, big trouble from from Yosef when he takes Binyamin to be a slave because then Yaakov will be very, very sad. So, um, all of this is done to force Yehuda to stand up, be a man, be a kingly person. That's what he does. He demands that Paro release Binyamin, and according to the Mayan Wes, he stomped his foot, and the whole country shook, and he's showing him, my brothers and I could destroy this whole country. In no time, flat. You better give us back Binyam. And then Yosef sees that Yehuda is living up to his potential, acting like a king. And that's when Yosef says, I am Yosef. Is my father still alive? So Yosef's task was to cause Yehuda to grow up, be a man, and stand up for what's right, and it worked. Okay, next. At first, Shaul was David. I mean, David was Malkin. He played the music for him. He, he sat at the table with the king. He was really beloved by Shaul. But then, after David killed Goliath, and the women would sing, Shaul has killed his thousands, and David has killed his tens of thousands. Shaul got jealous. And from that point on, he sought to kill David. 
Now, now the fan for some period of time, I don't know how long it was, months or years, and it was always in danger of dying. He was being chased by this one, chased by that one. He'd go to a country to run away from Shaul, and then the people in the country would want to kill him. So there were many reasons why his life, he could be in despair. So what did he do? He would get into these situations, and he would cry out to Hashem, Hashem, I'm going to die. Hashem, this can't happen. But I will trust. I trust Hashem that you will take care of me, and it will be okay. So Shaul, son of Benjamin, son of Yosef, son of Rachel, is doing his part to bring David into kingliness, which is total reliance on Hashem for everything. And it worked. Now, the next one, I can't do a picture because it involves Hashem. There was a man named Yeravam ben Nevach, and he was a brilliant man, and he was called by the people of the ten tribes to say, please go to Rehavim, the son of Shlomo, the son of David, and say to him, your father taxed us too much. Please, if you will lighten up the taxes, we will love you and serve you. And so, Rehavim went to the old man and said, what do I do? And he said, listen to the people. And then he went to his friends, his young friends, what do I do? And they said, tax the heck out of them. So he went back and he said, if my father taxed you like this, I'm going to tax you like this. So Hashem wanted Yeravam ben Nevat to help bring about Shuva from Rehavim. But Yeravam ben Nevat himself needed to do Shuva, so Hashem went to him, to his measures, and says, If you will do Shuva and do what I need you to do to bring Rehavim back, then you will walk with me in Ganim and in So your Avram said, hmm, you, but who goes first, me or David? And Hashem said, well, of course, David. And your Avram said, I'm not interested. As a result of which, he's one of the very few people who are listed as having no portion in Olam Abba. No future life. So, if Revan, who was of the tribe of Benjamin, as was Shaul, which is descended from Rachel, if he had tried to do what Hashem asked him to do, He'd be able to tell him Hashem walk in Gan Eden. Instead, he has no portion in Olam Abba. Instead. So, again, this was a son of Binyamin who had the opportunity to bring Rechavim to the fullness of his kingship. But we all have free will in the ancient Israel. So, this whole pattern, where did this all start of the children of Rachel helping the children of Yehuda? It started when Yaakov was to marry Rachel. And Rachel knew that her father was going to do a switch and put Leah under the veil and that would be the a huge embarrassment to Leah when Yaakov asked her for the secret code and 
Nej, jeg vil sige ikke. Bare et hund. Det er ham, jo. Jakob would run to Lavan and say, What has this here done to me? And she'd be standing there crying. Rachel didn't want to go back. And so she communicated the clues in a way that even Leia didn't know it was being shared as a secret. This was tremendous and serious for Nehru. She didn't know after that Yaakov would marry her. All she knew was she was presenting the embarrassment to her sister. And after that, her sister had six children. So, the goal of Rachel was to prevent embarrassment to her sister and to do the right thing. And that's the pattern of the children of Rachel and children of Yehuda and Dovin So, um, have a great week. And uh, I would say Happy New Year, but it's four months too late. Love you all. Bye.